Hello friends, welcome to communication engineering playlist. Here in this session, I'll be going to explain classification of modulation. So in previous session, I have explained you what is the necessity of modulation, why it is very compulsory to have modulation in communication system. Now in this session, I'll classify modulation in different categories and whatever modulation techniques that I'll be explaining in brief that we will be going to complete with complete detail in this complete course. So once I complete with complete course, you will be finding all modulation technique which I am which I am giving brief about in today's session that I will be completing in further sessions. So let us begin this session with classification of modulation. So here modulation that is classified basically in two basic categories. One is analog modulation and second is pulse modulation. Now in analog modulation usually we will be having carrier signal and we change characteristic of carrier signal. If I say carrier signal is A sine omega C T plus phi then here in analog modulation we change characteristic of this carrier signal in different techniques of modulation and that analog modulation further that can be reclassified in two categories one is amplitude modulation and second is angle modulation when we say amplitude modulation amplitude modulation is having different categories one is normal amplitude modulation in short, I am writing it as AM. In that, modulation will be having three different category of signals in modulated signal, carrier signal and two sideband signals were there in modulated signal. So that is normal amplitude modulation. Now second category, that is DSBSC, means double sideband suppress carrier. Now see, in normal amplitude modulation technique, we have some problems regarding bandwidth as well as regarding transmitted power. The reason is, in AM, we send carrier signal as well as sideband signals. So there is an issue regarding transmitted power and that issue regarding transmitted power could be resolved by double sideband suppress carrier. So here we solve power transmission so here we solve the problem of power transmission in double segment suppress carrier then after there is another category that is single sideband suppress carrier SSBSC single sideband suppress carrier now see in double sideband suppress carrier we send side bands. So there is an issue regarding bandwidth. It requires more bandwidth. Now to solve that issue regarding bandwidth, we can send single side band to extract original information. So here we solve issue of bandwidth. But there are some other issues which is there with single side band. That's why we don't use single side band that frequently. But instead of that, one another category of amplitude modulation that is vestigial sideband, VSB, vestigial sideband technique. So all these different techniques that I'll be explaining in further videos, step by step, so you will be observing that in detail. Here in amplitude modulation, what we do is, we change this information of carrier signal, this amplitude that we change in amplitude modulation. Now, second technique of analog modulation, that is angle modulation. Now see, in angle modulation, we can use two different techniques. One is we can change this frequency. So in that, we will be having frequency modulation. In short, I am writing it is FM, frequency modulation. And in second technique of angle modulation, we change this phi, that is noted as phase modulation. So I'll explain these two techniques in future video in detail like how we can do it. 
So in angle modulation, there are two techniques, frequency modulation and phase modulation. In, and in amplitude modulation, there are four different techniques that I'll be explaining in this communication system engineering playlist. Amplitude modulation, DSBSC, SSBSC and vestigial sideband. Now, when it comes to anal, uh, pulse modulation, then pulse modulation has been classified in two categories. One is analog pulse modulation and second is digital pulse modulation. Now, when we talk about analog pulse modulation, first basic technique that we use is pulse amplitude modulation. Now see what exactly the case which we do. In pulse modulation, we modulate modulating signal with respect to pulse. So in pulse amplitude modulation, we change amplitude of carrier signal with respect to modulating signal, but that will be in terms of pulse. Like say for example, if I say my modulating signal that is MT and that is somewhat this and my carrier signal. So that is what in terms of pulse. So if I say it is what pulse like this, right? Now in pulse amplitude modulation, in pulse amplitude modulation, here amplitude of this pulse of carrier that will change. So you will be finding it is changing like this where these are the pulse that is there with respect to MT. So pulse of carrier signal, amplitude of pulse of carrier signal will getting change with respect to modulating signal in pulse amplitude modulation. In second category, I will be explaining you pulse width modulation. Now see in pulse width modulation, we will be changing width of pulse with respect to modulating signal. So I am just giving brief idea right now. In detail I will explain that in future. Like see, here width of pulse is constant in PAM, pulse amplitude modulation, but in pulse width modulation, width of pulse will change with respect to modulating signal. So here you can see width of pulse is getting change. How it is getting change for that we just need to define a rule. But here with respect to modulating signal whatever rule that is being justified it will be changing width of pulse. And that width of pulse will gives you information like what is the information which is there in the received signal. So pulse width modulation is having modulation of width of pulse. And next one that is pulse position modulation PPM. So in pulse position modulation we change position of pulse. Like see over here these are the fixed position. So in PPM, I'm just showing it over here. We can have different position. Now here there will be more density and then again there could be. So here if you see in PPM, position of pulse that is changing. So I'm just showing it over here by this red color. Position is different with respect to modulating signal in PPM. So in detail we will be observing that but here I am just giving you brief idea like in analog pulse modulation we will be going to study three different techniques pulse amplitude modulation, pulse width modulation, pulse position modulation. So these three techniques that is what I will be going to explain you. And then after <clears throat> in digital pulse modulation we will be digitizing signal. And for that, first I will be explaining one basic technique that is pulse coded modulation PCM. Then after I will explain differential pulse coded modulation DPCM. Then after I will explain you adaptive delta modulation as well as delta modulation. So these four different techniques that I will be explaining in this course of analog as well as digital communication and engineering that even I will be going to cover. So all these different modulation techniques 
that I'll be covering in communication engineering of this course. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can suggest me even those videos which is required to complete communication engineering. I have seen few comments from students. They were been asking me to complete course based on gate syllables. Now see one thing that I would like to clear to all the students those who are viewing my channel. See I am teaching course plus gate examination. What I have seen is students were trying to study gate course syllables but they don't have proper fundamentals regarding course. So what happens is they are not been able to prepare gate syllables as per what they want to study about. So what I suggest them is they should study course properly. Once they study course properly, they can easily study gate syllables in parallel with course. The reason is at the end gate syllables itself is a course of engineering. So gate syllables is not something else like gate is something else and course is something else. Both are same thing but in gate we need to do some more practice but some more practice could be done only if you have understanding regarding course. So practice could be done based on understanding of course. So what I'll be doing over here is I'll be teaching you course plus some examples and now if you solve few more examples by taking some reference book definitely I'll give you assurance like say you will be able to score very good in gate examination as I have got very good rank in gate examination when I was student like you. So I'm suggesting you to pre prepare in that way. I have seen so many students who are going at different places like Kota at Hyderabad for gate coaching and I'm telling you ratio of success is very less but I have seen so many of my colleagues my students they have succeeded in gate by preparing by themselves by viewing videos on YouTube so it is up to you like how to prepare for gate examination so I hope that you understand that and definitely you can ask me those topics which is there in your university and I'll solve few more examples regarding all the subjects which I'm teaching here. My goal is to complete complete communication engineering courses as electronics and communication engineering courses as well as course regarding gate. So this is what I want to complete here and for that I'm doing some hard work as I'm doing job I find I don't find that much amount of time but on an average I'm placing two to three videos daily and probably within a three to three years I'll be able to complete entire course of electronics and communication regarding gate here and that will be beneficial to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Keep suggesting those things which is required to place over here. Thank you so much for watching this.